So the four meditation types that we're going to be taking a look at today are loving kindness, meta meditation, focus meditation, mindfulness meditation, and transcendent or quiet mind meditation. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. In this video, we're going to take a look at four different types of meditation that will be tools in your toolbox to progress your meditative practice further. We're going to be taking a look at these from a neurofeedback framework. It really helps when you actually take a look at brain waves and understand what the brain is doing as a vital organ in these different meditative exercises so that you can understand when to use them and in what context. You know, the more that I learn about meditation, neuroscience, and different brain circuits, the more I'm amazed about how these different meditation types can activate the brain and be very useful in different scenarios. And it's amazing to be on the forefront of these findings as our technologies educate us on how these different techniques are affecting the brain. And that's really been a story throughout science. We've always had tools to help us understand the material world. For example, we use radio telescopes to study space, outer space. We have polymerase chain reaction technologies to study the genetic code. And in brain science and neuroscience, we have a plethora of different modalities. In brain scans, for instance, we have MRI machines that can track blood flow activation patterns of the brain in fMRI, and more recently, FNIRs, where we use near-infrared lasers to do that. And we can also measure the electromagnetic patterns of the brain through technologies such as electroencephalography or magnetic encephalography. And more recently, EEG and FNIRs have been incorporated into wearables that you can actually use at home. And as these wearables become more ubiquitous in home across the world, I think it's important to put this information out there so that people can understand what types of data to look for in their brain activation patterns, especially if they're trying to educate themselves about how to meditate correctly or focus correctly or boost their mood. Any one of those cognitive exercises can be benefited from taking a look at data of your brain. There's a lot of different programs and teachers coming out right now. I'm really excited to be launching my revamped brain circuit training program. I put out all new videos on the teaching program, and I've used everything that I've learned over the last couple of years of interacting with clients and neurofeedback teaching to uh, create this program. So if you're interested, be sure to apply for that. And this video is actually a bit of a sneak peek of what we cover in that program, so I hope you find the content useful. So the four meditation types that we're gonna be taking a look at today are loving kindness meta meditation, focus meditation, mindfulness meditation, and transcendent or quiet mind meditation. Meditation. These meditation types have been explored deeply through a neurofeedback lens by Dr. Jeff Tarrant of the Neuromeditation Institute. So if you want to go even deeper than this video, check out his book, Meditation Interventions to Rewire the Brain. Now the first meditation type that we'll take a look at is called loving kindness or meta meditation. You might have experienced some of this before. It's pretty popular in self-help literature. I like starting out with it in my neurofeedback exercises because it can have an immediate effect over your physiology. It can make your body feel really good and in turn make your mind really pleasant and peaceful as you're entering into a meditative practice. For those of you that feel like your meditation sessions are superficial, like if you're just staring at your breath for long periods of time and nothing's happening, uh, I suggest incorporating loving kindness meditation into that exercise to bring it a lot more depth. So what I'm really talking about is evoking the feelings of compassion, empathy, and gratitude into your meditation sessions. What's really interesting is that our mood and emotions do have a biosignature within brain waves. One of the ones that is talked about often is called alpha asymmetry in the frontal lobes. What you can find in people that are suffering from depression, so low mood, low motivation, uh, no joy out of activities, they can have a biosignature of having higher levels of alpha and lower levels of beta in their left prefrontal cortex and having lower levels of alpha and higher levels of beta in the right side. Now in neurofeedback, you can promote higher levels of beta and lower levels of alpha to help overcome that. And in meditation generally, it can be very useful to understand how to generate those emotions to influence those brain waves. And that's what we do with the loving kindness meditation. There's quite a few different methods and practical ways to do that. If you've ever been to a Tony Robbins event, he actually does this quite often. He'll have you slow down, slow down your breathing, uh, get relaxed and rooted in where you're sitting, and then just put your hands on your chest and feel your heart beating. 
And you actually can thank your heart from be, for beating every day, for keeping you alive, for giving you your passion in life. So that's one way you can automatically increase gratitude and beta waves within your brain waves. The other thing that you can do is visualize a uh, past occurrence that's made you very happy or a person that makes you very happy. You can pick different meditation targets like someone in your family or a friend that you can bless with your energy. You can bless them safe, secure energy and have them feel at peace and that makes you feel really good for uh, uh, praying and wishing that they experience that. You can even do that with people that you don't necessarily like in your life day to day. Maybe someone at work or someone that's wronged you before. It actually can be a very healing experience to send them that energy as well. So you can have appreciation for yourself. You can have pleasant past memories. You can bless people in your life through visualization. These are all methods to introduce meta into your meditation. And what this can do is bring depth and actually energize you to more fully engage in the meditative practice. The second type of meditation we'll just call focus. And as you might have guessed, this is a huge part of uh, meditative practice in many different cultures. Uh, just focusing on one object for extended periods of time can elicit some pretty wild mental phenomena. For example, a lot of books will talk about sustaining relaxed attention on a meditation object and eliciting different energy forms like Namita or even the more powerful jhana that the ancient uh, mystics talk about. So if you want to get more towards those experiences, you like I said, you have to have all these tools to get there. As you might have guessed, the concentration part might benefit a lot from neurofeedback because the program can let you know when your mind has wandered from the meditation object. Now the meditation object could be a number of different things. It could be your breath. It could be a different point on your body. It could be a visualization. It could be a candle flame in front of you, or it could be characters on a screen like we do in my brain circuit training program with the mind lift system. And what happens when you're focusing on a meditation object for an extended period of time with relaxed attention is that your brain configures to that and reaches eventually what is called unification of the mind, as Chula Dasa would say, from the mind illuminated. And when you get unification of the mind, that's where you get much less distractions. It's like the meditation object is pulling you in. It's very difficult to use conscious energy to focus on one object for extended periods of time, as you might have guessed if you've tried meditation before. But if you're able to use these different tools to uh, create a meditation object that is so engaging that it pulls you in, then it is not very difficult to maintain your concentration on the meditation object. As far as neurofeedback goes, we tend to use a meditation frequency in the low beta range called SMR that lets you know if you are maintaining sustained attention or not. It can be very helpful in the medical side for people that have ADHD problems. Typically with ADHD, you have under activation of the frontal lobes and you can increase low range beta or SMR to help wake up their frontal lobes so that they're able to pay attention better to what's going going on in the environment. And we can definitely use that in meditation as well to help clients reach unification of the mind. And as you might have guessed, you can incorporate loving kindness meta meditation into that SMR brainwave to help bring you more energy to sustain focus for longer periods of time until that meditation object becomes so attractive that you naturally gravitate towards it. The third concept is called mindfulness, and this is really a product of the classic alpha frequency brain waves that you might have heard about. Classically, neurofeedback would often use alpha theta frequencies to reach higher levels of alpha in meditation. But as you can see, it's just one of the tools that you can use to further your meditation, and you have to know when to apply it and how to apply it specifically. So naturally, what can happen with focused meditation is that you try too hard, you focus in on the meditation object so intensely that you don't really get anywhere with it. You kind of just stress out your brain. And we can see that with high beta waves. If you're trying too hard, you get too much high beta. That's why in the neurofeedback protocols, we actually put training wheels on the modules to keep you from going too high into high beta. And what we do in the mindfulness is teach you how to relax your focus. Chula Dasa would call this attention versus awareness. You can you can focus very intensely on a meditation object or you can blur a little bit out and become more aware of your surroundings. It's kind of like the focal length of a camera lens. You can have a very narrow focal length and only have that one object within focus or you can 
come out on the focal length and bring more objects into view. And that's really what we're attempting to do with the Alpha, is you wanna have good attention skills with the SMR, but you also want to be able to pull back out when you need to, to allow those Namita and different mental phenomena to come in after sustained periods of attention. And what's really cool about the Alpha brainwaves is that they serve as a bridge between the higher and lower brainwaves. And as you get deeper into meditation, you get different um, slower brain waves coming into view. Mostly what you'll get is theta waves coming up. And many believe that this is the doorway to the subconscious mind. So that if you're really trying to rewire your mind or prepare yourself for things like psychedelic assisted therapy, it's important to open up those theta waves and understand what that feels like so that you can go deeper into the meditation. And I have a module in my brain circuit training program that I call the profound and infinite in which we actually take off the training wheels, the neurofeedback training wheels and train strictly alpha so that we can allow theta to come up and deepen the experience. Earlier on, we limited theta to make sure that people aren't falling asleep during SMR exercises, but then later on in the module, as people become more aware of how these different brain waves make them feel, we can open up the floodgates for theta to come in and have uh, deeper meditative experiences. And that's where the fourth type of meditation comes in. We call it transcendent or quiet mind. This is where people may become completely dissociated from their surroundings and enter into very deep and profound meditative experiences. Uh, in Altered Traits, Daniel Goleman found that a lot of uh, experienced meditators will experience very high bursts of gamma waves during these experiences. And there's a lot that has been written about these experiences uh, to include people entering in different echelons of jhana states. And the science is really trying to catch up because not only do you have to find a very experienced meditator to uh, track these mental phenomena, but you have to have the right gear in order to record these very fast gamma wave oscillations as well. So this is the one that's uh, least understood. But in my opinion, if you're able to train these other tools and know how to raise beta levels through meta or alpha levels through uh, relaxation and quiet mind mind and use your attention with SMR, you can open up the alpha bridge and bring in theta waves and gamma waves in order to experience these more heightened meditative states. And that's what we try to do with the Brain Circuit Training Program. So those are the different meditation types that we cover in my Brain Circuit Training Program. Even if you don't wanna do a training program like that and just wanna use the Muse headband at home, I think that understanding these meditation types will help you get better scores on the Muse headband. The Muse headband program itself tends to respond better to relaxed attention mindfulness. So just remember that concept between attention and awareness that Chula Dasa talks about and play around with it until you get better scores with the Muse headband. If you want more on that, you can take a look at my Muse Meditation Mastery ebook, my free ebook to learn more about different strategies that you can use with the Muse headband. All right, so that's enough for today. I really appreciate you listening here towards the end. And also thanks for supporting Tech for Psych. If you wanna see more behind the scenes of what I'm up to day to day, check out my Instagram account Account, Cody Rawl underscore Tech for Psych. Really appreciate the listen. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. See you next time.